Hey there guys, how's it going? This video is going to be a continuation of my previous series of videos which were an experimentation into long versus short exposures. Now for those earlier tests, I'd used a very, very fast telescope indeed, my 11 inch Celestron Rasa, which is f2.2. And I think largely as you may expect, we discovered that in skies as bright as mine, the lower limit of an acceptable exposure is very low indeed, and certainly far more than the 60 seconds exposures I was using for my shortest subs in those tests. I still think it was worthwhile doing, and we still did note some very minor differences between the 1 minute and the 10 minute and the 1 minute and the 5 minute tests that we performed earlier on in this series, but I offered to do further tests basically with a slower telescope, and uh, you guys said yes please so here we are i'm well up for it because i really do enjoy doing these tests and sharing the results with you guys so here's what i've done for anybody just catching up with these tests um basically what i've done to make sure it's as fair as absolutely possible and that any differences we observe should be down to simply the differences in exposure lengths between the two I opt to use a interleaved capture method where on the same night using the same camera, same telescope, same everything, the whole same rig, the only thing that I change is the sub exposure length interleaved throughout the whole session. So for example, I'd take a five minute sub exposure followed immediately by five one minute exposures, rinse and repeat for as long as I possibly could. Now in this case, I managed to get a little bit more data than I actually needed, so I was able to kind of go through and throw out anything at all that looked bad to my eye. Uh, and in kind of final stacks now, what we're looking at in both cases on the left hand side and the right hand side is 90 minutes each. For the whole of this test, I'll be keeping the 60 second stack on the left and the 300 second stack on the right. But as I said, both are actually completely equal in exposure and they should be completely fairly compared, I think. So let's just dive straight into showing you the differences. I'll describe what we're looking at first. So this is quite simply data that has been cropped. It has been calibrated with flats and bias in this case, as people asked me if I was able to do that. Uh, and as you can see, when both are left completely linear, there's a little bit of a base brightness difference, as you would expect on those 300 second subs. Versus the 60 second subs, um, the cores of some of the brightest stars are maybe just ever so slightly burned. But the core of the galaxy is just about intact on the 500 second subs, even though some of the nearby neighboring stars are just slightly burnt out. But we can accept that kind of trade off for the sake of this experiment. Overall brightness, clearly brighter on the right hand side, though, as you can see, you can actually witness the galaxy without any stretch applied whatsoever so when we apply this same just stf at this point uh, we are going to do a proper non-linear stretch in a bit the differences between them at this kind of view nothing really i i can't really see any difference whatsoever i think anything i might be viewing is perhaps due to viewing angles on my screen you know what i mean uh, there is it's arguable there's a slight brightness advantage to some of the regions on the M51 on the right, the 300 second subs over the left hand side. But in terms of overall sharpness, detail on display uh, and contrast, we'll point upon those in a moment. I don't think there's really anything much to call between it uh, and certainly nothing that could be not, you know, could not be made up for in processing with very, very, very slight tweaks. Now, if we just zoom in a little bit more and take a look, let's say at this rift of, uh, matter going from the galaxy that's been consumed as part of M51 there into the main one. Previously on the Rasa with the long subs we'd noticed a slight bit of a contrast uh, boost for those longer ones. On here we're not really observing the same thing but what I am observing very slightly and I'm sure this is going to show up for you guys too is the nebulous regions in M51 so, so let's say right here here for example these are the ones I'm looking at right now they do slow up, uh, show up very, very slightly better on the right hand side, I would say. So uh, even though the fainter stars over, you know, low signal to noise ratio regions of the image are showing up just about equally well, it seems like the natural brightness that comes with a longer sub, at least in the settings that I used, did lead to slightly more uh, visibility of the nebulous features 
right there. Uh, I'm sure this could be probably be made up once again with maybe some higher gain settings on the 60 second subs, but I tried to keep everything the same for this. Now, in terms of other regions of nebulosity, let's say down in this part of the spiral arm that extends all the way around uh, in this arcing fashion right here, there are more nebulous regions showing up just down there versus on the 60 second subs. Hopefully it's coming through YouTube's compression and hopefully you can see this. But it looks like a very slight, I will say at this point apprehensively, a very slight win in terms of overall SNR for the 300 second subs. Now I did measure these a moment ago uh, using the script. So we'll just take a look at that once again, make sure I did nothing wrong. So I'm gonna go to scripts, image analysis and SNR and just let it make a measurement on the 60 seconds. You do the same thing, image analysis and SNR on the 300 second subs. So this is the, as I say, unedited data. And as you can see, just looking at the process console right there, the 60 second uh, sub master turned out to be 42.62 decibels in channel one, 4257 channel two, 4188 in channel three. Um, it's actually channel zero, one and two, but I've misread. Whereas over on the 300 second side, if we just get that up, all three numbers are very, very slightly higher. So maybe it does bear it out if the SNR script is accurate, um, which I expect it will be, um, to what we're actually vi witnessing visually uh, as part of this test. We do see a very slight, perhaps, SNR boost. Now, I'll not dwell on this one too much longer, as the next part of the test I think is a little bit more interesting. How does the data look? after a little bit more processing. So this is still completely linear. You know, it's uh, not yet being stretched. It's just, again, screen stretched for us with STF. Let's just give it that stretch overall once again. Now it's obviously a really strong stretch at this point, but that's kind of what we want to be able to see a touch more. So I'll just get a view of the whole of M51 there and hopefully a few of these fainter background stars and can do a little bit of comparing. So I'm going to take it back through those previous two steps. It's also been color calibrated at this point now with spectrophotometric color calibration. So here we are before any is applied. I'll just reset those stretches. Let's go ahead and apply blur exterminator to the left. Hopefully you can see if I just undo and redo a couple of times, the effect that that has, it works extremely, extremely well. And again, on the right now, undo and redo we can see these kind of nebulous features this little arc over here starts to pop up really cleanly in both but as we'd noted before it does look very slightly stronger in the 300 second subs i mean this is a minor difference i feel like i'm making a mountain out of a molehill with some of these differences um but i also kind of feel like i have to at this point because the you no, know, there's barely anything to observe between these two images, you know what I mean? Um, let's move on one more step anyway, see how they behave with noise exterminator. And as you can see, both are pretty clean, as it happens, just for 90 minutes from Bottle 7 Skies. Um, more color popping up in certain regions, though, more, more color preserved and, uh, and, and able to be brought out particularly, let's say, and again, a further nebulous region, I think, down in the, the spiral arm, the, the main extension of M51 right down at the bottom there. Um, interesting to note, I think. There is one other thing. Um, some very faint stars are more visible on the left hand image, the 60 second subs over the right hand side. And I think that probably has to do with this statistical robustness of the deconvolution that can be applied through blur exterminator being greater on the 60 second sub since it's made up of you know 90 60 second subs versus just 18 300 second subs on the right maybe it can do a better job uh, in that kind of case if we're just trying to evidence this for you a little bit um if we take a look at this small region right down here it looks to me like these are very slightly better resolved whatever they are, be they clusters or foreground stars for us, um, they look a little bit cleaner resolved on the left. It could also be down to the brightness though, that's making the right hand image merge ever so slightly more together. Again, 
The differences that we are able to observe in this case are extremely minor, and it's just making me think that the range of acceptable exposures that goes uh, with the bright skies like I have here is probably wider than I actually expected. Um, I imagine for those of you out there living in darker skies, maybe you'd notice bigger differences on tests like this. And now we did one further test with just a little bit more of a... Uh, Processing effort applied very very minor. I'm not saying this is anywhere near a finished image because it's not but It's just for the sake of this comparison uh, and you can see that with a bit of saturation applied and now actually taken non-linear uh, and stretched The overall differences in brightness are slightly more apparent I think and it, it took care to try and stretch these two equally and apply the same amount of saturation to them as well so even though I could I Really think I could make the left hand image look just like the right with more processing, I didn't, you know, deliberately for the sake of this being as fair as it possibly can be. So if I just put these two side by side once again for you, you can clearly see those nebulous regions that we talked about previously. You know, they are brighter and they are more colourful. So there is something to be said for the slightly longer subs in this case. Um, I think there's not, again, not much question uh, there is a slight advantage to the 300 second subs and I think looking at this in the future I'd probably go somewhere in between um, and maybe go 90 seconds, 120 seconds, maybe even 180 seconds or so as my go-to exposure length um, for this F7 telescope. But if I did choose to stick to 60 second exposures I don't feel like I'd be missing out on too much to be quite honest. Um, Again, like I say, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. It seems to me that there is an advantage, but it's a very minor one. Uh, and I wouldn't want to, you know, kind of push people in one direction or the other. I tried to put these things out there so that you can make, you know, your own decisions from this kind of thing. And I just hope that it has been helpful to some people. It's uh, been a lot of fun actually doing this kind of test. So with that said, I think that is about it for this one, guys. I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet for you. I am going to come with another test for this using narrowband, if possible, or even dual narrowband filtration, because I think that could be fun to add to this and make it a much more photon-limited uh, test, which could make the, uh, the results all the more stark, perhaps. But certainly in this broadband test, it's been an eye-opener for me. There isn't that much difference, but there is a difference, and I think that's important to note. And that's what makes these experiments worthwhile, I think. So, hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, a huge thank you guys to everybody for your support. For those of you out there using my affiliate links for Blur Exterminator, Noise Exterminator, Star Exterminator, all the exterminators, you know what I mean? They are absolutely wonderful tools. You guys are giving me a, a huge amount of support each month, and it really helps make my life better. And I thank you for it. All the people with memberships, uh, YouTube and Patreon, direct donations and even people all the way down to just a simple clicking like on the video you all help me out so much and i want you to know that i do appreciate you so thank you thank you thank you and i will see you in the next one so until then look after yourselves thanks again and clear skies <laughs>